Hey guys, welcome back. It's uh, it's time to talk about how do you actually make a computer out of these things. And so I want to describe the basic idea uh, known as the Serac Zoller scheme. And uh, let's uh, let's talk about what happens if I get several of these ions in an ion trap. Um, and I cool them way down, there are modes of vibration of the system that can happen. You can get uh, different collective modes. And the, the one that we're going to use is the center of mass mode, where all the ions oscillate in the same direction. Of course, you can imagine other ones where um, the ions on the left go to the right, and the ions on the right go to the left, and so on. But uh, but those are higher order excitations, and we want to look at the lowest possible mode we can, and that is the collective center of mass mode. That's all we're going to need for today. And the uh, the idea is because the whole system, that mode is quantized, just like we quantize the electromagnetic modes in a cavity, this mode is quantum mechanical, and so it has a ground state, and it has a first excited state. The interesting thing about those two states is that all the ions in the chain are collectively in the ground state or the first excited state. And so you can use that as a mechanism to communicate between the ions. That's kind of the idea. So uh, for example, the quantum state at any given moment could be that ion A is in its ground state, ion B is in its ground state, Ion C is in its electronic excited state. Ion D is in its electronic ground state. And then the whole system is in the ground vibrational state. So to specify what's going on with the system of four ions, you have to know the electronic state of the four uh, ions in the chain individually. And you need to know the, vibra the, vi the vibrational state of the whole system. That's, that's the idea. Okay, now let's look at what the energy levels are going to look like for a single atom or single ion in this chain. Notice that um, the energy difference between the ground vibrational state and the, and the n equals 1 vibrational state is quite small, whereas the energy difference between the ground state and the excited state, the electronic excited state of a single ion, is fairly large. So the trick is that we can, uh, we can tune a laser to the energy difference between, or the difference in energy between the excitation energy of the electronic state and the vibrational state. What this means is if you shine a laser in, h bar omega zero is the energy difference between the ground state and the excited state. Omega c is the energy difference between the ground state and the first vibrational state of the whole system. And if I have a laser whose frequency is h bar omega naught minus omega c, then if a particular ion is in the excited state, that could stimulate a transition to the ground state in the first vibrational state. In other words, it would force the system into the n equals 1 vibrational state and at the same time stimulate an emission from the excited state to the ground state of a particular ion. That turns out to be the trick to make this thing work. Let's see, let's see how it happens. Um, and then I just put the words there that are exactly what I just said, so that when you have a laser detuned to omega naught minus omega c, you'll stimulate a transition into the first vibrational state. But you but if the if the atom is in the ground or the ion is in the ground state in the zero vibrational state. There's not enough energy there to get it into the excited state. So you, you can, by tuning a laser to a particular transition, you can force that transition to happen. And that can get you between n equals 0 and n equals 1 of the vibrational states of the system. Okay, so how are we going to make a gate? A, a controlled knot. You remember that from last semester we talked about different quantum gates? A controlled knot happens to be universal. That means if I can make a controlled knot, I can make anything, because by putting controlled knots together, I can build any quantum gate I like. Let's uh, imagine that we have four basis states that are going to be our computational basis, with all in the n equals zero state of the ion chain. So 
uh, this would correspond to 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 1, if in a binary arithmetic kind of sense. I want to introduce two operators that are going to enable us to make a C naught. The first operator is uh, U. And if we apply U to the atom A, it's basically a laser pulse that's detuned to the omega naught minus omega C frequency. So if both ions, and we're only going to apply it to ion A, so ion A <coughs> is the target of this operator, ion B just goes along for the ride. But if ion A is in the ground state, nothing happens because the laser is detuned and, and it can't affect uh, ion A if it's in the ground state. But if it's in the excited state, what it does is it forces a transition to the ground state, but it bumps the uh, vibrational mode up by one. It also happens to have the effect of multiplying the phase by minus i. This is just a question of how long do you apply the laser pulse. Um, remember that it's there's going to be some kind of Rabi oscillation, and there's an e to the i omega t. And if you multiply, if you have t be just the right amount of time, you can change the phase as well by minus i, and uh, and it doesn't matter what state atom B is in. So if at, or ion B is in the ground state or the excited state, again, it just goes along for the ride because the laser pulse is uh, hitting only ion A. Okay, now let's imagine another laser pulse. And all this thing does is it changes the sign of atom or ion B. <clears throat> so the idea is... Um, this is a laser pulse that acts only on ion B, and uh, let's see what it does. If uh, and it and it only works if the vibrational state is uh, n equals one. So by picking the wavelength and the timing of the laser pulse exactly right, and we'll get into this a little bit more next time. But the idea is you can set up a situation where if the vibrational state is zero, nothing happens, but if the vibrational state is one, then you get a phase change, but only if atom B is in the uh, ground state. If it's in the excited state, nothing happens. If it's in the ground state, you get a, a minus one. That's the idea. Then you apply U again to ion A. It does exactly the same thing it did last time. Um, that is, if ion A, uh, if um, n is equal to 1, it, it's the detuned laser. If n is equal to 1, and ion A now is in the ground state, it'll bump it back up to the excited state with the change of phase of minus i. And uh, it doesn't matter if what ion B is doing, it just goes along for the ride. And if you apply all three of these together, if you take uh, UA, VB, UA, if you go back and look at all those transitions, you'll see that the net effect is that if ion A starts out in the ground state, nothing happens. If ion A starts out in the excited state, then uh, you either get a nothing or you get a minus one factor depending on the state of ion B. So if ion B is in the ground state, nothing happens. If ion B is in the excited state, you end up with a net phase change of minus 1. And <coughs> that's a consequence of the phases that get added for the various uh, operators. Um, but that's it. Once we have this, we can make a C naught. And the trick is you form uh, plus and minus states of ion B using a Hadamard operator. We talked about Hadamard last semester, but you may remember that uh, Hadamard takes uh, the ground state and puts it into a superposition of ground and excited with the plus sign. It takes the uh, excited state and puts it into a superposition of ground state and excited state with a minus sign. And uh, if you apply the W operator that we've just worked out to the system when it's in the ground state of atom uh, ion A and in plus or minus, it comes out plus or minus again for ion B. But if you're in the excited state of atom A and you apply W, then plus or minus of ion B goes to minus plus. It changes sign. And uh, that turns out to mean 
that uh, we can make a C naught. If you if you remember, Hadamard is the thing that takes it e to minus and g to plus, and if you form an operator that's Hadamard w and Hadamard, you'll see that what happens is that operator, if they're both in the ground state, you get the same thing back. If atom A is in the ground state and atom B is in the excited state, you get the same thing back. But if atom A is in the excited state, it flips atom B from the ground state to the excited state. If atom A is in the excited state, it'll flip atom B from the excited state to the ground state. So basically, depending on whether atom A or ion A is in the ground state or the excited state, ion B either stays the same if ion A is in the ground state, or it flips if ion A is in the excited state. So that is the definition of a controlled knot. So what we have here, I know it's a little complicated, but basically it's a scheme whereby you can take a string of ions and by carefully uh, addressing them with focused laser beams that act for definite periods of time, you can construct a controlled knot gate. And with controlled knot gates, as I said, it's theoretically possible to build anything. All right.